Hey, what's up? What's good, folks? BQ here. This is the Impact Lounge YouTube channel, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan, as I always say. So if you're a first-timer, this is the channel you want to subscribe to. Hope everyone had a good Veterans Day yesterday. For those who reached out to me, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Um, I'm sitting here on my lunch break, and I've uh, been thinking about something all morning that I wanted to rap to you guys about. And then, uh, you know, Lewis did a podcast on this not too long ago. With the rascals and you know i read a lot of the comments you guys left but i really wanted to touch on it myself the departure of the rascals because now we know that they're most likely wwe bound and the way that it was delivered on television you would have definitely thought that there was an angle because it was done so nonchalantly you know <laughs> josh matthews was like oh the rascals are leaving um and then moves on to the next topic you know like it, it was like nothing and then the social media everyone acknowledging it, it they've never handled a departure like that before maybe lax in a sense but uh the ev eviction thing was probably the laziest thing i've ever seen in my life but to talk about the rascals for instance for, for a second i wasn't a rascals fan as far as the gimmick i just i it didn't reach out to me. I didn't care for it. Um, them as a talent, however, I mean, they put on some pretty damn good matches. And I'm going to focus on Desmond Xavier here in a second. But if you remember back when the Rascals debuted, Impact was pushing these guys. This is back when the, the tag team division was absolute shithouse. It was like... All they had was OBE and uh, LAX, and they were just fighting every week, and they didn't actually have any other teams. And it almost seemed like, how the hell are they going to build this division up? I mean, it was it was bad. So when the Rascals came, Impact was really, I, I don't mean wrestling-wise, I mean social media, the way we were talking. They were pushing these guys like, this is our, you know, our honeypot. Like, we struck gold on these guys. They, uh... When they would have their matches, whether they're squash matches, whatever, I mean, the the announcing was always so excited. Oh my god, I've never seen moves like that. They did the finisher, you know, their finisher, and oh my god, you know, really losing their minds over these guys. And it was the first, I don't know if I want to call it domino, but it was the first step to rebuilding the tag division from, like I said, the shits. And um, even though I was into the gimmick. I used to tell people back then, man, I would put these guys against any tag team in any other company right now. I just thought they were incredibly talented. And uh, think about Desmond Xavier here for a second. He won the Super X Cup. Proved to me nothing. And, you know, I'm talking about the tag team division when the Rascals showed up. Think about the X division when Desmond Xavier showed up. They were. There was a period of time where the X Division was like Braxton Sutter, uh, the Marche Rocket, who, who I like those guys a lot, don't get me wrong. Um, they would try to throw Crazy Steve in there a little bit. You know, DJ Z, who was, you know, X Division style, but wasn't necessarily flying all over the place. We used to get super excited at one point when Andrew Everett or... Uh, What's his name? Mark Andrews would wrestle because they're the only ones that at the time really represented much of the X Division that that we once knew. Uh, you know, Trevor Lee wrestled in the X Division. He had a stranglehold on that title and what, you know, his matches were OK, you know, but the X Division at one point was so dead. And, and when Desmond Xavier debuted, um, he was a, a breath of fresh air. He wrestled a style that the other guys weren't wrestling and someone that, and it was reminiscent of just like the old X division in a sense, you know what I mean? Like he was just a real daredevil and he again was, was just like I said, the rascals with the, with the tag team division, he was like almost a, the, the first building block towards, towards something better. You know, he wins a super X cup, uh, means nothing. He was off TV for like, multiple tapings after that and and fans were like dude what why isn't this guy you why aren't they using this guy and i think a lot of people were afraid that they were going to lose him at that point but they felt like he was a real blue chipper a guy to really run with and then 
when they bring the Rascals as a tag team, same thing. It's like, oh my gosh, they just breathe a fre- uh, breath of fresh air into, into Dez, and now we're going to see something happen with the Rascals. You know what I mean? Like, we're give- they're giving Dez something to do that was exciting for people. You know, and to fast forward a couple years, zero ch- zero titles between any of them, multiple title matches. You know, when Tra- when uh, Trey lost at Bound for Glory, when I was we were reviewing Bound for Glory, like on the Cool Factor and all that, I was saying, "What do you, Trey? Trey can't have another loss." I knew Trey wasn't going to win the match, but I was like, "Trey can't lose another X Division title match." Like this is crazy. He had a great feud with, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, his name's escaping me. Ace Austin, I'm sorry. He had that great feud, and it seemed like they were going to go a more serious direction with him. And then after that really good feud, he went back to the Rascals, the, the way he, you know, the kind of comedy type of thing. And uh, the Rascals had a match with the North that was, when they debuted, it was very shortly after they de- debuted on Access TV, I think. I want to say it's maybe second, third, fourth episode. And it was, uh, oh man, that match was crazy. That was like my favorite match of the year. Uh, I, w- I was, I mean, they absolutely killed it. And then after that, they go back to doing like comedy stuff again, you know? And it was it was like, man, does, does Impact trust these guys to win anything? They would win a bunch of matches that meant nothing. You know, like a, they'd have like a random four-way tag match against... Reno Scum and Triple XL and the Deaners and, and they would win, but they wouldn't get like a title shot because of it. It was just just a bunch of matches that meant nothing. I had a feeling they were gone because at Bound for Glory they wrestled the Deaners on a pre-show. It's like a five-second match. You know they lost to Triple XL and then when they wrestled the Good Brothers not long ago, I couldn't even recall them getting offense in that match. That's how how little they got. So I felt like they were on the on the way out the door, and I said a similar thing about. Des and Wentz, or I was like, dude, they can't possibly lose another tag team title match, you know? You know? So every time they got a, a title match, I'm like, dude, it, at this point, who cares? What, if they eventually win, who fucking cares at this point? Because they they just, um, I think they missed the, you know, missed the train with these guys. I think they dropped the ball. I think if there's a, a, a offer out there, there for NXT, like, is rumored, you know, they see something in these dudes. And uh, that's the company I thought they were going to go to because I'm kind of like, man, AEW don't got no room for no tag teams. I don't know what Ring of Honor's doing with their tag team division because I just kind of started watching them again. So I had a feeling that's where they were going. And if Impact was doing nothing for them, they might as well go somewhere, even if NXT, WWE does nothing for them. At least maybe they can make more money, you know? But it's, it's disappointing because I've been saying a lot with the tag team division lately. It's a long video, I'm sorry. I've been saying with the tag team division a lot lately. If you're not the Good Brothers, Motor City Machine Guns of the North, like everyone else was just, uh, they were Jags, just a guy, just some guys, you know? They're just there wrestling matches that that mean nothing. They deserved a lot better. They did, because they were around for a while, and it seems like whoever's, you know, whoever these tag teams or single wrestlers are on these short-term deals or not on a contract get these, get this momentum, but... The guys who were there for long, long term just don't. I mean, you know, they should have got a run. Trey should have got a run. If you're pushing this dude as a single star, why were you pushing him as a single star if he never accomplished anything that w- was noteworthy? It was like it was like we're gonna use these guys because they're great wrestlers. That's what it felt like. Now, you know, the reports came out that they didn't go off on bad terms or anything like that. I'm not saying I think that's the case. You know that 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 it was bad terms. You know, I hope they went out on good terms. That, that that's awesome. You know, but as far as a talented tag team that should have been taken a little bit more seriously, you can still do the treehouse gimmick and all that. But I mean, to, to make them make them legit tag team contenders, make tr- Trey a legit contender for something. You know, um, and then here's the, the the crappy part too. We're getting ready to hit ten minutes here. I'm sorry. The crappy part is that. Now this storyline is going on with Rich Swan, and he needs backup. And these guys would be perfect because now you on one side you got like Eric Young, Sammy Shamrock, possibly Chris Bay. I mean the Rascals would have fit in there very well. It would have given them something to do 
that meant something and it would have really elevated him. That was, that was a good storyline for them to be involved in. And, you know, too little, too late. Here we are. And they're, uh, they're going to be done. We're just going to have a fun, fun match next week. That's all it's, it's going to be. And that's it, you know? So, uh, I'm disappointed in that because I thought that they were just a talented team that just, in fact, did nothing with, you know, didn't, they don't trust the guys that aren't the good brothers in the North and, and, or, or come from another company or have a name. Like when you have a legitimate chance to build a team, it just seems like they're just not, just not trusting in them. So, whoo, that was a lot. Leave your thoughts in the comments. Uh, got to wrap up my lunch break. I'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, I'll be doing Cool Factor podcast tonight. So that'll be coming up real soon. Peace.